Hey, what's going on guys? So I know it's been a few days since my last video, which is a little unlike me, but uh, a lot of you know that I've been moving. So I've, been, I've had to tear down my entire studio and office and rebuild in the new place. So it's been taking a lot, uh, a lot of time and energy and money and everything. So um, I did want to do a video though, even though I don't have my main setup up and running yet. So I'm doing this on my MacBook Pro. Hopefully it comes out all right. I'm also using a new mic, um, which is actually a better mic. So hopefully it sounds okay. Um, but we are going to be building, as you can see in, in my last video here, the Angular 6, what to expect. The first comment here by M Mahmoud Fahim, sorry if I butchered your name, um, he asked to do a video on CSS loaders and spinners and I needed something simple to do so I figured that that was a good, uh, a good topic or a, a good project for today. So that's what we're going to be doing. Uh, if we go over to this tab here, we just have just a basic H1 in, in paragraph, but if I reload, you can see we have this little spinner here and it's going to stay there for four seconds and then it's going to load in the paragraph. Okay, so what we're going to focus on is building the spinner in pure CSS. Okay, it's not a GIF or GIF, however you want to say it, uh, or anything like that. It's a pure CSS spinner, and we're actually going to build three different versions. Um, and it's going to be really easy. It's going to be quick and uh, painless. So let's head over to VS Code. And if you want to follow along, I have two files in index.html and main.css, and that's in a folder called CSS Spinners. All right, so the markup is going to be very simple. We're going to go ahead and just use Emmet to create our boilerplate here. And let's take the title and we'll call it CSS Spinners. And let's link our style sheet. So we want main.css. All right, and the body is going to be very simple. We're going to have a class of main. We're going to have an H1 and we'll just say hello. Welcome to my website. Obviously, you guys can put whatever you want here and then a paragraph. And I'm just going to do lorem 50 tab, which will give me 50 dummy text words. All right. And we're going to do some a little bit of JavaScript later on. But right now I want to focus on creating the spinners. So we're just going to save this file and um, let's see. Let's go back to Chrome. Oops. And let's uh, let's close this up and I can close that up as well. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to open this up using live server, which is a VS Code extension, which I would highly recommend if you use VS Code or you could just open up the end the HTML file. But if you have live server, then you can just right click or command click and you can do um, open with live server. And that should open it up. Um, oh, I already have something running. Let me just stop that real quick. And then we'll go ahead and do it again. Open with live server. And there we go. So this is this is our version. And we're going to head over to the CSS. So let's go to main.css. And this is actually going to be pretty simple, guys. Um, we're just using a simple keyframe, but we're going to first create our class. Now, like I said, we're going to create three different spinners. So this will be spinner one. They're all going to be very similar. They're just going to have a, a slight change in each in each one. But we're going to say spinner. Let's call it spinner one. That'll be the class. And then we want to use the pseudo selector of before. All right. Now, when you use before or after, you can actually insert content, but we don't want to insert any actual content. So it's just going to be a blank string. Um, and then we're going to add a box sizing. Um, if you're hearing like drilling or hammering and stuff next door, I apologize. They're, they're still working on the next the next door condo or next door apartment. And um, you might hear a little banging. So I, I apologize for that. So we're going to set this to border box because if there's any padding or anything like that, um, uh, what the heck? Why is this? Oh, I put a comma here. All right, so that's just going to make it so if we add any padding or anything like that, it's not going to go outside of the box model. Okay, so let's add a position of absolute. Now the reason I'm doing uh, I'm doing this, let me just kind of explain what I am doing. When we have our spinner, I want it to be smack dab in the middle of the page. So what we're going to do is we're going to bring it down from the top 50% and from the left 50%. And I'm going to make it 60 pixels height and width. 
So we also have to make up for that. So we'll, add, we'll have a margin top of negative 30 per pixels, which is half of 60, and a margin left of negative 30, so that it's actually in the middle and it's not, you know, 30 pixels down or 30 pixels to the right. Okay, hopefully that makes sense. So position absolute, let's add top. So from the top, it'll be 50%. And then from the left, it'll also be 50%. And let's add that. Um, uh, let's add the, the height and width. So we'll say height 60 pixels and width 60 pixels. And let's add our margin top. And we want that to be a negative 30 because we want it to move up. Okay, same thing with uh, margin left. We want that to be negative 30 to move it to the left. All right, now we want this to be a circle. So we're going to say border radius, and that's going to be 50%. And now for the border. So basically, the, this spinner, the way it's going to look, you saw it in the beginning, it's going to be just a, a gray circle with an orange piece going around and around, and that's going to be the border top. But the main border is going to be three pixels solid and you can change up the, the width. You can change up the colors, whatever you want. But I'm going to make this light gray and then let's do the border top color and let's change that. I'm going to make that coral. OK, and obviously you can use whatever colors you want. And then the last thing, of course, is the animation, which we're going to call spinner. We're going to create the keyframe in a second. And then the, t the, the speed I'm going to set is 0.7 seconds. And then the movement is going to be in a linear fashion and it's going to be infinite. We want it to keep going. OK, so let's create our keyframe. So this keyframe is, is very, very simple. We're just going to say at keyframes and we're going to call it spinner. And then what we'll do is we'll say two have some curly braces and we want the transform property to be set to rotate and we want it to rotate 360 degrees so we can say 360 deg all right and that's it that should create our spinner so what we'll do is we'll save this and we'll go back to chrome uh, i'm sorry no we don't want to go back to chrome we want to go to our html because we want to implement that spinner class somewhere so for now i'm just going to hard code it right here so we'll say spinner one and save that and go back and there it is so the gray you see is the border and we made it gray and then the, the spinning spinny part is the border top which we made the coral color Okay, so it's as easy as that to create a CSS spinner. Obviously, you can make it bigger or smaller. You can make it thicker, change the color, do some experimentation with it. Uh, now what we're going to do is do our second one, which is going to be very similar. So what I'm going to do is copy this whole thing. And we're going to call this one spinner two. So we'll change the class to spinner two. And all we want to change here really is the border. Let's see. So the border will say, uh, let's say two pixels solid. And then instead of a color here, whoops, I want to do that. Instead of this color, we're going to say transparent. OK, because we want the, the, the complete border to be transparent, but I want the top and bottom border to be coral. So what we'll do here is we'll just copy this down and we'll also add border bottom color of coral. And then the last thing we're going to do is just change this from a linear motion to an ease motion, which is more of a, it's less of a smooth um, circular effect. And it's more of like a jerky, like, you know, one spin, two spin. So let's go ahead and save that and let's go to in the index HTML and change this to spinner two. And let's see what that looks like. So we'll go to Chrome and there we go. So you can see that it, it's not a full circle now. It's like uh, two half circles and it has a different kind of, of motion. All right. So that's our second spinner. And obviously you can experiment with it if you want. Change the thickness or the color or the size, all that stuff. Uh, so let's go back now to VS Code and let's add our third spinner. All right. So what I'll do is copy the entire 
second one that we just did. And let's paste that in. And we'll change this to spinner three. Make sure you change the class as well. And as far as what we're going to change down here, uh, let's see. So we want the we actually don't want a border at all. The, the, the straight border property, I'm going to get rid of that. And then we're going to have a border top. Okay, not a border top color, but a border top. And then we're also going to do a border. Whoops. A border right. So let's do border right. All right. So for the border top, we're going to do two pixels. Solid. Coral. And for the border right, let's do two pixels. Solid. And then we're going to do transparent. All right. And this gives it this is going to give it kind of a cool effect. So border right should be transparent. And then as far as um, the motion goes here, I'm going to change it back to linear. And that's it. So let's save it. Let's go back to our index and let's change um, this to spinner three and we'll save that. We'll go back to Chrome. And there we go. So now this it doesn't have the full circle. It's basically just one line um, and it has kind of a kind of a point on the end of it. Okay, so it almost looks like a like a tail or, or something like that. And I think it looks pretty cool. So that is the third style of spinner. All right. And we've done all this with just CSS and it's pretty easy stuff. You know, we had one line in our keyframe, so it's it's pretty easy to do. Um, now what I'm going to do is just add a little JavaScript to have it kind of give it that effect of it's loading in the paragraph. Okay, and usually you'd use this for like some kind of Ajax request, whether it's through fetch or, or however you're, you're doing it. Um, but let's go back and let's add a little bit of JavaScript to our index HTML file. All right. Now we don't want to just hard code the spinner class in here, so we're going to get rid of that. And then down here we'll add or right here above the body, we'll add in some script tags. And I'm going to first of all hide the paragraph. So I'm not going to use jQuery. You could if you wanted to, but I'm going to use vanilla JavaScript as usual. But we're going to use document dot query selector and we're going to choose the class of main and then the paragraph within it. And then we're going to set the style dot display to none. So it hides it by default. So if I were to save this and we look at our, our page, you can see that the paragraph is now gone. All right. The next thing we're going to do is add the spinner. So we'll say document dot query selector and we're going to choose the entire main class. And we're going to use class list dot add, okay, which is the same as jQuery's add class. And we're going to add the class of spinner dash one or, or two or three, whatever you want to add. And if I save that and we take a look now, we have the spinner. All right. So now we want the effect of it of it loading in the paragraph. So for that, we're just going to use set timeout. So basically, we're just going to mimic a server request that takes whatever four seconds. So we're going to say set timeout and set timeout takes in. It's going to take in two things, a function and then the time that we want it to take. So for the function, I'm going to use an arrow. And we're going to I guess we could just copy these and make it easier. And we'll put that in here. All right, um, I'm actually going to move this up. And for the main class, we're going to remove the spinner. So we want to say class list dot remove spinner one and then we want to set the paragraph from none to block. OK, so that will bring it in. All right. And then the last thing we need to do is just add in our parameter. So right after the function, we'll put a comma and then 4000, which is 4000 milliseconds or four seconds. And obviously you could put this to whatever you want. So if we save this and go back to Chrome, it should take four seconds for the spinner. And then the spinner disappears and the paragraph shows. All right, guys, so that's going to be it. If you like the video, please leave a like. And if you like this kind of content, and you're not subscribed, please consider subscribing. And that's it. I will see you next time. Thanks.